Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. Today, I'm joined by Joe from Miami. And, uh, you know, he has a terrific story. And uh, I just could not wait to share this with our audience. Um, Joe, welcome. Thank you for doing this, man. Thank you for, for allowing me to do it. Oh, no. Um, I, I think your story should be heard by every single driver who is out there. Um, but before we get into your own introduction with your own words, um, you know, you, you, you're you the most dressed up interview I've had so far. So <laughs> let, well, yeah. let's start with that. Let's start with this. I mean, the, the, you got the tie, you got the collar shirt. What's going on here? Man, I, I mean, when I first started, I wore T-shirts. And that was good. And I kind of started wanting to be a little more formal. Um, I, I enjoyed doing the driving. So I just kind of wanted to give the passenger a little bit more uh, professionalism. So I bought shirts. And uh, after wearing the shirts a little while, I just had a thought. I'd seen a couple of guys at the airport with ties on. And I thought, I'd like to try that. And I'm, I'm a I mean, I still wear short pants. It's his Florida, so every everybody wears shorts here. But uh, I just started wearing a tie, and I've been wearing it ever since, except this for is, Friday. That's that's a casual Friday. This is awesome. So um, let, now let's get into about you, right? Um, tell us what you did uh, before you joining the gig workforce, as I call it. Uh, rideshare driving mostly, um, and um, how you got into rideshare and why you got into rideshare. So my wife and I moved to Florida, and I actually live in Delray. Uh, we moved here to uh, help with the family, some of the family stuff. And uh, in Memphis, I was an electrician, and I was always getting dirty and uh, – it was hot in the attics. And so after we moved here, we kind of talked about not doing anything for a little while to kind of acclimate to Florida. And uh, I got very bored. You can only walk the dog so many times a day. You can only watch so much TV. So I kind of started getting bored. And uh, somebody suggested uh, Uber Eats. I actually tr tried to sign up with DoorDash and I'm on the waiting list and I've been on it for like over a year, but I tried uh, Uber Eats and I started working it and I liked it. I liked doing Uber Eats. It was, it was kind of nice. It got me out of the house and it, and I made a little bit of money. And, uh, at some point after about two or three months, the money dropped out. And so, uh, I kind of thought about trying to, I, I actually accidentally Uber because when they do their updates, some of the little check boxes that are on, uh, if you don't watch it and and i got it was checked for me to do just uber x and i i thought i was going to pick up a uh an order and it, there were two people standing out there and i had a pickup truck and i told them i mean this is a pickup truck it's not what you usually would get and the talk that i had with that gentleman on the way i took him to the casino in fort lauderdale and the talk that i had it just made me want to start doing ride share. And so my wife and I talked about it and we, I made the agreement with her that as long as I didn't pick up after dark, she was a little concerned about security. As long as I didn't pick up after dark, she was okay with it. And so that kind of started it. And I've just been working it full time ever since. So when did you exactly start? I know your story, but I want you to tell our audience with your own words. So I started, I guess, around May, the end of May, or maybe the first part of June, and I worked Uber Eats for about two months. And uh, then I, I guess it's around the, the middle or the towards, the towards the end of July, actually, when I started doing just regular Uber X only. And okay. uh, the car that I had was new enough, uh, or was new enough just to do Uber X. And... Uh, because of our vehicle situation, I had a pickup truck and I started doing my wife, using my wife's car to do the Uber. And uh, I noticed she had trouble getting up into the pickup truck. So we traded it in for her, a new car. And then the car I had started having check engine lights coming on. So, so I was afraid that I would be in the middle of Miami with a passenger in the car and all of a sudden the car break down. 
so I got a new vehicle and uh, we traded it in for a new vehicle and I've just been kind of pushing forward ever since. Yeah. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about the vehicle that you got into, you got yourself into because, you know, on show me the money or, or uh, we, we don't suggest new vehicles to do Uber X. Right. And yeah. I'm sure you watch us and that's how we got to know you anyway. But, um, um, talk a little bit about the the car, and obviously you have a note on the car. So you know, you yes, can, I do. Yeah, let's talk a little bit so, about that. So what actually happened? I traded the uh, I had a a GMC Terrain. That's what my wife had, and we traded it in actually for an Equinox. Okay. And the Equinox itself has only got four extra seat belts. So all I could do was Comfort and and Uber X. And I noticed during the spring that I missed a whole lot of of spring break trips and right time, right about that time, I just, my wife and I talked about it and we ended up trading in that Equinox. And, and I mean, I hadn't been doing it, but a couple of months and I had 30, 30 something thousand miles on that 29,000, I think actually on that Equinox. So when I traded it in, I mean, they gave us a decent, we were still a bit underwater, but they gave us a decent price on a Traverse. I bought a 2023 Traverse with uh it was a lt model and um i was a little bit underwater so it added a little bit to the to the overall cost of it but but the notes was doable and uh i've been driving it i i haven't got to do any kind of uh uh spring break trips yet in it because i didn't have it but but i plan on being able to do spring break trips this next spring yeah, but so I that's an XL car, right? You can you can put yes, it is an XL car. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, I, I, I think I think you did the right thing there. I really do because XL trips pay a little bit more, and yep. being where you are, you have families traveling, and and I think I think you did the right thing. But yep. you know, besides this, um, uh, <laughs> you sent me a screenshot. I don't know, maybe a couple months ago, um, or maybe a month ago. I'm not even sure. So I get like a thousand emails a week now. So I, yeah. I, I lose track, <laughs> I but, um, so you uh, are one of the rare commodities in, in our world. Okay. The reason for that is, um, you call, what do you call your Uber driving? Is it the Uber adventure or what do you call that? Yes. Yes. I refer to it as the Uber adventure. I don't turn down any trips. I hit every trip that they present to me. And, and sometimes it takes me to South Miami. Sometimes it takes me to Key Largo. And I've been as far away as, as Tampa and Orlando from, from like the Palm Beach or the uh, Fort Lauderdale area. So I'll take anything that comes to me. Now, I've made some good money going to Tampa one time. And the passenger knew that I wasn't going to make, you know, bring any, be able to bring anybody back. So he paid me a $200 tip. And that trip, actually, I, I made a lot of money on that trip because of Uber and that passenger. Yeah, so, you have, you will have those trips, but we obviously do not suggest taking every trip, right? I understand. Because we, we suggest that every driver should treat this as their small business, right? And know their right. costs, and be, that includes the car note, the gas, the depreciation, the wear and tear, all that good stuff. So you had the Traverse for how many months now? It's about five months, and okay. I've got thirty, almost thirty-three thousand miles on it. All right, so you're so, a full-time driver. You're driving five, six, I, seven thousand miles a month, right? And yes, and you are trusting right. the algorithm to send you all over the place, right? Um, I, I, yep. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about um, why you chose to go that route. Why are you choosing to accept every trip? Well, I, I mean it. This is a learning experience for me. I, I first started and, and it, it become a habit to just every, it was exciting at first. Yeah. Every trip, my thumb is just set up to hit, you know, hit and accept everything. And, yeah. and because of that, I accept things so quickly that I don't really study the card that comes up in front of me. Now, I, I'm kind of starting to get worn a little bit. Um, I think that Uber sometimes thinks I live like in Miami beach because yeah. I'll end up, that's where I ended up yesterday. I spent all day. I worked 12 hours on the weekends and I spent all day and I pretty much stayed around 
Del Rey and Fort Lauderdale. And then the last two trips actually took me to the south side of Miami. And then the last trip took me to, to, uh, to near South Beach, near near the Miami Beach area. Or so how far Miami. are you? How far are you from uh, the Miami uh, property? I, area? I, it takes me like a hair bit less than an hour to drive home. Okay. And it actually takes me a little longer because I have a habit of filling up before I get start, you know, for the next day. Yeah. And, and that's the way that I play the game is I, I, uh, I fill it up every evening on the way home. Yeah. So well, when you end up in Miami, you're an hour away. Do you calculate all this in your earnings, the mileage, the, the time so, spent, oh, dead miling back? They only, the uh, that car, and, and a lot of people refer to it as a truck, but it, it it, the only thing I use it for is is ride share. Okay. So yes, the actual mileage on that on that vehicle is actually what I drive, and yes, it is calculated in in my in my earnings in, okay. in my uh, little formula. I have a spreadsheet. Okay. Now, there is something that might be a little wrong with the spreadsheet right now, but the way it's coming out, I'm about forty cents a mile is what I'm actually, that's actually what my spreadsheet says I'm, I'm, uh, I'm needing. That's my cost. Your cost. Okay. That, um, that so counts. oil changes, car washes. I mean, everything that I do, I've even tried. And I think my calculation was messed up once I put depreciation in there. So yeah. that's probably, I need to look at that and uh, try to figure that part out because it is actually going down a little bit by little bit. It was uh, originally 60 something cents. Yeah. And is after I put that that uh, depreciation in it, it started coming down a little bit. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I, I I commend you for doing that first of all because I cannot tell you how many drivers I speak to on a weekly basis, and I ask them, "Do you know your cost per mile? Do you know what it takes to operate your vehicle?" And they have no clue. So I call you a newbie. Look, you're a newbie. I mean, look, it, oh, yeah. there's. Uh, <laughs> There is a steep learning curve. Everybody thinks this is so easy, right? Just pick up point A, drop off point B uh, to the next one. I'm like, no, there is a steep learning curve in any city that you're in. And in a spread out state like Florida, I'm telling you, you're going to put those miles on your car. But oh, yeah. at least you know what your costs are. Now, let's go into a little bit of um, what you have seen as far as, first of all, tell me a little bit about your typical day how many days a week you work how many hours a day you put in and are you on both platforms uber and lyft no i i just i mean i can do lyft and i've just signed up for in drive i'm i'm trying to take some of your recommendations i have signed up for in drive and i have been communicating i think his name is steve with rides and he's telling me that by the end of this year the east coast of florida is going to be uh is going to be on the platform and I, I actually send him messages ever so often letting him know I'm ready to drive. Yep. Um, and, and I am looking into trying to start using all of the apps. Um, I have a little bit of an issue with overcomplicating things and I'm yep. afraid if I get too many apps going at once, I don't have a way to, to actually uh, monitor it. Because when I I feel like if I pick up a ride with with Lyft, I need to shut Uber down because I don't yeah. want to get a I don't want to get a, a, a where I refuse the trip. Yeah. On, on any one of them, and I do go for for a high acceptance rate. Yeah. Uh, right now, and and I told you the other day that I only had ninety nine percent, but one of my rides passed through the two hundred trip mark, and I I'm back up to a hundred percent. So you're a hundred percent acceptance rate, and obviously you don't cancel unless the passenger cancels, right? So, so you're hundred so percent acceptance time, rate and zero percent cancellation rate, right? So I'm working. I actually have a one percent cancellation rate, okay. and that is for a specific reason. I, I, when I get up to a to a ride, if it's minors, I'll ask them, "Are you eighteen or older?" And when they say no, yep. I'll cancel it. Yep. And before I get away far enough away, because I accept every single trip, they'll send it to you again. Before I get a block away, they're requesting again, yep. and I'm taking it. But then I have to cancel it, and yep. that cancellation works against me, you know. Yep. And that's I, yeah, I you know that's a huge problem with uh, all the states that and all the drivers I speak to, you know, because 
the systems that Uber and Lyft have should be good enough that if one driver cancels for underage minor reason, which is clearly identified in the app, they should just get rid of that passenger, period. Right. Yeah. But then they don't do it and they put the pa- they put the driver in a bad situation because it's clearly against their terms of service. We're not supposed to pick up anybody under 18. Right. Who's yeah. not, a, a you know, who, who, who doesn't who is not accompanied by a by a, you know, an adult. But let's talk a little bit more about your, uh, you know, uh, I know the reasons, but I want you to tell our audience, why are you so loyal to your customer and why are you so loyal to Uber? And why do you not pick and choose? Why don't you become member of the Cherry Pickers United? <laughs> so you tell me. So, I mean, I have been uh, in construction for a long time. I'm an electrician in Memphis, like I said. And and the bosses that I've had, especially the last one, I just, he was such a good guy that he, he actually, I felt like he was looking out for my, for, for me. And my family. I mean, he did things. He helped me out, and and I just started, you know, with with my dad, kind of pushing the the. Uh, you work a hard day, and you get a you get a hard day's pay, and 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 this company is going for you, you know, and and that's kind of the mentality that I've grown up with, and it's hard to not to not expect a company to actually stand up for you, yeah. and and I understand. I mean, when I first started doing this. Uber, I reached out to a couple of people and, and they actually, I mean, they, they talked about wanting to help, but they never did. So I've just ended up having to try to do this the best I can and learn on the job. And, and that's really where my, my mentality, for, you know, but besides the fact that my dad helped to push uh, loyalty to me, uh, that's that is something that was just kind of ingrained in me and and it's just a little difficult to not think that a company is looking out for you and and i think i've heard from you before that you talked about you're not really showing loyalty to a company it's an algorithm it it is and and a lot of times i refer to it and and i think that this app hears me sometimes because i'll i'll kind of yell at it but i refer to it as the uber god you know, and, and, and that's the way that, that I've kind of taken it. Now, uh, there are times when I just had thoughts, I just need one more good size trip and that'll be the end of the day and, and like magic. And I think that the app has seen that my habits are that I'll take the big long trips towards the end of the day. And it puts me in the middle or the far side of Miami, an hour away from my house. Yeah. And, and I've come to think that that's the habits that, or that's the, uh, patterns. I yep. think that that algorithm is noticed that I'll do. And, yeah. and well, they so, definitely I, have a way of figuring out what you are able to do and what you're comfortable doing and feeding you those, right? So, yes. you know, you talked to me a little bit about uh, loyalties and I've, you know, I've talked to you before, obviously. And you look, there is no loyalty in this game, okay? You have to, I know it's in your DNA and, you know, I applaud you for it because it, it, it is what it is, but... This is the new world. This is the new economy, the gig world. There is no loyalty. Your time is for sale to the highest bidder. The rest, you know why that is, Joe, is because tomorrow with with some fraudulent passenger complaining about you, they can fire you, right? Your boss that you dealt with and you liked would never do that. They would always ask you your side of the story before they get rid of you, right? Right. In this new world, there is that doesn't exist. So that's why you have to treat these companies without any loyalties and without any, you know, you don't have to feel like you owe them anything because you're driving your own car. You're spending your own money to make them money. You understand? Right. But, I understand. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I want to, you know, treat this a little bit of a little bit of a tutorial as well. So when you're one hour away at the end of your day and you work the 12 hour shift and I have to dead mile an hour back home, right? Um, do you use your destination filters on both um, apps? So, so I I did at first when they first said that I could do that. I'd set up a destination to be here in Delray by a specific time, yeah. and what ended up happening, and it says it the same as with these reservations. If you look on the reservation uh, information, it tells you we're going to feed you trips towards that reservation yeah. so that you won't be late. Yeah. I have never had them to do that. When I set up a, a destination 
as I'm going to that, when it tells me it's time to leave for that destination on the way, they start giving me other trips and almost take me the other way. So I just kind of, I don't use it. I just know that I'm going to drive home 45 minutes to an hour uh, from wherever I'm at. And, and I've just learned to accept that. Okay. Well, I, I, you know, this is my promise to you. Once we've done this and we post this, I'm going to give you like a half hour co private coaching session, how to use the destination filter properly. Unlike some others in your area that you reached out to, we don't operate that way. As busy as I am, I'm willing to help you out because you're doing this with us. So, um, and, and I will show you that there is a method to the madness. And, you know, you may end up back at your house uh, at a reasonable time without dead miling. Um, I want to also talk to you a little bit about uh, the remaining few minutes. Um, how long are you planning on doing this? Look, you had the car for five months. You put 30,000 miles on it, right? Are you saving some money? Uh, do you have a plan B? Do you have a rainy day fund? Talk to me a little bit about those issues. So so we do. I mean, we have money put back. Now, the savings account has kind of gone down uh, with the first year of, of bride share uh, because of things that happened. When I took out retirement money from Memphis and before we moved here, we, did, we took it out and, and uh, we didn't think real hard about having to pay taxes at the end of the year. So we were hit pretty hard last year. But yes, I have an excellent wife that does very good finances. And and basically she got us here, you know, with, with just a little bit of a little bit of effort on my part. She took she's she's the one that takes care of the money. And and that's something I'm truly grateful for. Um like, but like to the one <laughs> we, so so we we uh we have money in a savings account and okay. and she actually invested money okay now with that car and and with the with the one way that i'm looking at this eventually i'm gonna have to join your union the the cpu i i do plan on learning how to do that it's just uh, at this point because i create habits yeah and, and and my habit has been to where when i hear that sound my thumb touches the screen and that's the habit. Yeah. You know, I haven't learned how to take that to me. 10 seconds is a real quick, real quick. It is. And, and, and it's really longer than you think. Yeah. Or than I think. Yeah. And, and I just, it's hard to experiment with that yeah. and, and be on the job and, and keep my acceptance rate. Yeah. Well, the accept, look, the acceptance rate doesn't make you more money. Right. So, you know, we will we will combine all this, you know, uh, how, how you can train yourself on what to pick. And when you join the CPU, you know, we will help you out with that part of it as well. But how long, how much, I mean, look, you just started doing this. Are you enjoying it, by the way? Are you, obviously, you're very personal. Honestly, I love it. I, I, I get to tell and talk to people. I get to kind of tell them my story and, and I get to hear their story yeah. as well, you know, yeah. just to. To be honest, my voice, the the dialect, I'll say that I have the Southern draw, yep. is the first thing that people talk about. Where are you from? Yeah, and that that tells me that they're willing to have a conversation. Yeah, and so I'll tell them this is you know I learned to talk in in probably Lubbock, Texas, and I I moved to Lubbock when I was nine years old, so I picked up the rest of the accent from Memphis. Yep. Yeah. And and that's just, you know, that starts the conversation. And I just let them, I, I just let them talk what yeah. they want to talk. And if they ask me a question, I'll answer it. And I also have a, a second phone that I use for music in the car. Yeah. And I have it so that it plays through a photo album, a photo okay. gallery. And they see the gallery and I have the cutest little granddaughter. Okay. And when her picture comes up, they make comments about that. I have tried to create uh, certain scenarios in the car to create conversation because I really believe that if you have a very positive conversation with people, they're going to tip you more. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the thing is, you know, I, I'm going to interview the CEO of Lyft in a week or so, mm -hmm. you know. I ask my passengers, do you know who the CEO of Uber is? Do you know who the CEO of Lyft is? They go, no, we don't know. We don't care. But you know who they know? They know you. You're the face of right. Uber. You're the face of Lyft. You're the face that they know and they will remember. And them coming back to Uber depends on you. Because if you give them a shit service, they're not going to come back. 
They're going to go to Lyft, right? So I I really think the driver is the key to keep the customer on the Uber platform or the Lyft platform because they are the ones they are engaged, right? And we're the face of these companies. But in the remaining couple of minutes, you know, um, I want you to give our audience some advice, okay? I want you to tell them um, why Rideshare is so great and how much longer you're going to keep doing it. And then, you know, I'll give you the floor. You close. Uh, I guess for me, it it, it is uh, something to keep me busy right now. It, it it just it keeps me active, and and it keeps my my brain going, so to say. So so I kind of enjoy that, and I have always enjoyed talking and be, you know meeting people, and and that's that's one of the main reasons that I, I enjoy keep enjoy doing it now. When I first started, the money was exceptionally good. And, and I mean, I, I made some really good money. And then I found out what the summer slowdown means. So, so you know, I enjoy this mostly for the conversation and, and meeting people and making money. And not necessarily in that order. It, it, you know, there's always uh, priorities. And, and uh, I plan on doing this until... I'm 68, 69. I mean, as long as I can do it, and as long as I'm healthy enough to drive, I, I plan on just sticking with this. Now, eventually, I'm going to want to slow down because I'm I, the way that I do it is three 12-hour days, and I'll pick up a day during the four. I, I, I work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 12 hours, and then I'll pick up a day during the week. And that way I have three, sometimes four days to spend with my wife and, and family. And, and I have two dogs, so that's my family right now. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? You are enjoying doing something, and, and why not, right? Keep doing it until you cannot do it. I'm Please be safe out there. You know, you're a gem. I mean, seriously, I... I it, 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 I'm glad I met you, but hopefully one day, if I'm in Florida, I will definitely meet you in person. And, uh, you know, I thank you for doing this. And I, I hope it opens some eyes in our driver community. But we're going to welcome you with open arms to the CPU pretty soon. OK, OK, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> I'm ready. I want more money. Yeah, you stay you stay healthy, you stay well, you stay safe. And thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Sergio. I appreciate it.